You know, when you've lost someone in life, people will come and say, just move on and forget about what has happened. But when that person is very important, it's very difficult to move on. Somebody said you should move forward because you carry this person with you in the memory of your life. Today we are discussing a very important topic in our show, Painful Goodbyes. My name is Kumbuzo Dube and our topic for today is saying goodbye to a very precious child. And to help us in this show, we have the Mnyakas, and I just want to welcome them to the show. Welcome Thank to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So who is, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Who are the Mnyakas? All right. Okay. I'm Fungai Mnyaka. I'm a teacher by profession, and I'm a mother of three okay. girls. Okay. All right. A mother of three girls. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm Elasmus Miyaka, um, an electrician, I'm studying supply chain management at the moment. Um, I'm a father of, of three girls, as she has just mentioned, of which uh, one of the three girls is uh, no longer with us. Uh, we lost here some time. Um, so basically, that's who am I. 40 years of age now, mm -hmm. and um, baptized um, member of Mahashula West Church. Yeah, basically, that's probably what you'd want to know about me. I'm also in a family, born in a family of seven, and being the last born. Okay, yes. All right, all yes. right. Beautiful. Uh, I'm interested in knowing whether she's the last born as well. <laughs> no, I'm not the last born, <laughs> but I'm the last, when it comes to girls, I'm the last girl in my family. Okay, so this is a family of last ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, beautiful. Thank you. It's nice to know about you. So growing up, mm -hmm. what was your ideal about a family and maybe talking about children? You spoke about your three children. What was, what was your ideal? Okay, our ideal family uh, was um, probably to number one is to be happy, mm -hmm. and number two, um, when you engage and you have joined, mm -hmm. you are twine. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, the ideal thing is um, God should bless you with children, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And when God blesses uh, you with children, um, you see them grow. Mm -hmm. And you would want to be part of their dream. Mm -hmm. okay. You would want to share the, uh, the pains, mm -hmm. the ups and downs with those children. Mm -hmm. And probably see them, uh, those children, uh, being a blessing mm -hmm. above all mm -hmm. into the community, into the church. Yes. Okay. So that, that, that was uh, the ideal um, situation, which we, as, as, a, as a couple, we were looking forward, right? And probably I can say we're still looking forward. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I think this one belongs to mom. Um, tell us about your children. My three girls, they are gifted differently. Mm -hmm. The first one is a bit quiet and reserved. Okay. And the second one, the lead, mm -hmm. she was outgoing mm -hmm. and she was someone who is jovial. Mm -hmm. She is not that type of a child who when you get to a place could be stable. She was that type of a child that wants to maneuver and know a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And the third one, I think she, it's like she resembles the late one. The late one. She is too talkative, very clever. I, I don't know, she's just an extraordinary one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. No, that's that's beautiful. Um, and I think your children must be a very precious gift to you. Yep. And um, thank you for sharing your story with us. And as we come after the break, we are going to listen to the sad part of this story because they have shared with us that they have three children and one passed away.
Don't go away. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to the show, Painful Goodbyes. Uh, as we parted, uh, we spoke about the three children that belong to the Miyakas. I didn't hear the names. What are the names? Okay. Um, the first child, our firstborn is Leandra Miyaka. And our late children, uh, uh, which is a daughter again, is uh, Kimberly, was Kimberly Miyaka. Mm. And uh, the last born uh, is Prudence mm. Nyasha Nyaka. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this name Nyasha, which is between, means grace. Okay. Right? Okay. Oh, so we, 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 we actually feel that uh, we, are, we are so loved. Okay. Uh, the, the Lord is very uh, gracious on us. That's mm -hmm. why we, 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 we actually gave him that second name, second. Nyasha, mm -hmm. because uh, look, after having lost another, uh, a child, mm -hmm. and God still uh, gives you another one. Mm -hmm. So to us, it was actually yeah, a, a portion of grace mm -hmm. from up above. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. That's why you've got that name. Thank you. It's a lovely name, Nyasha. It means, actually, like you said, it means grace. Yeah. And as I'm, I'm thinking about what you've just shared, that God gave you another child. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we may need to know what really happened. If you can share the story, what exactly happened? I know it's a very difficult place to go, but maybe let's take let's take it and maybe look at what happened. Okay, uh, we at camp meeting. Uh, Queens camp meeting where we do camp mm -hmm. for our district. Then it was on Friday. Usually on Friday, people knock off a bit earlier mm. so that they go and prepare for the Sabbath. Yeah. Uh, just like everyone else, I went and prepared for the Sabbath. Then after that, you know kids, they'll be playing around, so mm. you need, they need a bath mm. before they go for the evening service. So I just boiled my water. Then I was using a gas stove. Then after boiling my water, I removed the pot from the gas, then I put it down where there were stones because we're in a tent. Mm -hmm. Then as I was in the tent, I heard someone was calling me from the other side of the tent. Mm -hmm. So as someone was calling me from the other side of the tent, I didn't realize that my child get inside the tent. Mm -hmm. Then as I was attending to that person through the tent's window, that's, you know, I don't know what happened. I just found my child down there and the water was all over. All over. Okay. I think that's all that I can remember now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what basically happened. So she got burned, the water was all over. Since the water was boiling, I think she... Yeah. The water was already down, it wasn't on the stove. It was not I on the put stove. it down because okay. I was done boiling the water. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was waiting to just call you and let her take a bath. So I didn't realize that the sisters had left here so that they would be playing by the road as mm -hmm. she would come to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then after that, what then happened? Yes. <sighs> I, I just picked my child. Then I went out of the tent. I screamed. I mm -hmm. cried, mm -hmm. holding my child. Mm -hmm. Then everyone was in their tents. They, uh, they came trying to help, mm. and the father wasn't there. Mm. We had to call the father, and you know, when you had the camp meeting, some of the phones will be switched, will be off. Mm. There, is, there is no electricity and stuff. Mm. We had to ask for another church member to mm. call the father. Mm. And one of our church members offered a lift. Mm. And fortunately, and I say fortunate, we had a niece. Mm. close by who was camping from the from our church mm. and she's the one who assisted us we also you've got uh my sister-in-law mm -hmm. she was also there they assisted and that's how we left the campsite for hospital for the hospital yeah mm. so then you then met him yes at the um i was given i i actually received a call mm. 
And when I received the call, I was told uh, the child is bent. Mm. But I could hear her screaming from behind. From behind. She was actually crying. Mm. And the first thing that came to my mind was... That, that was Kimberly crying. Yeah, Kimberly crying. Mm -hmm. not, 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 not Kimberly, her. Hey, your wife. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that came to my mind was... Um, Yes, these, these guys have, have told me about the child being bent. Mm. I'm sure they're just trying to console me. Something really more than bends mm. has happened. Probably uh, something really serious has, has happened that they cannot just share. Mm. So quickly I was at work. Mm. And to tell you the truth, I had, I'd prepared everything mm. to actually join them for the Sabbath. Mm. And um, all I did was um, I communicated with the guys that were at the camp. They said, no, 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 because I wanted to drive okay. to the campsite. The campsite yes. And they said, no, it will be too late for you to actually come to the campsite. Mm -hmm. What you can just do, just rush home, mm -hmm. get all your, your, your documents, your, your cards, your hospital mm -hmm. cards, so that we meet at the hospital, mm -hmm. below hospital. Mm -hmm. And then I did so on my way. Another call from one of our elders, one of our, our respected elders at church. Mm. He calls me again mm. and he said, Miyaka, just try to cool down. This is just their, their, their bands mm. and their wife. She's a child and she's still very young. They'll, they'll heal and, mm. and she'll be okay again. Mm. That again ringed another bell. Yeah. Why this emphasis? Mm. You know, mm. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm human. Mm. But I, st I, I proceeded, took her documents, everything. We, I dashed to the hospital. And I was, I, I was at the hospital first, I think. Yes, I was at the hospital first. Mm. And then they came. Um, they, had, they had actually removed the clothes, the clothes, and she, she had bandaged all over from the, from the limbs here up to the chest. To the chest. Yeah, so she had bandages, and when she saw me, she cried. Mm. She, she, she came to me, I, I picked her. Uh, she looked okay, mm. you know, from, 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 face, value. From, yeah, face value, she mm. looked okay. But then when the, the nurses and uh, the specialists uh, went through their processes, they did everything that they could do, and the, the result was uh, she's bent, she was 75 percent. Mm. I, I don't know what, what that means, but to me, it, it was an ex, those were excessive bands, yeah. right? And she, we, we, we did the processes so that, so that she would be admitted. Mm. And she was admitted. Um, that was the first day. And you know, when you had, when you admitted, she was, she was only a year and 10 months. Mm. Is it? Yeah, yeah, a year and 10 months. But now she was, she was old that we could now start communicating, you should say, daddy, and, and, and mm. stuff like that. And we had earned that bond. And then obviously when she she's admitted, she had to sleep at the hospital mm. from that day. And um, we, 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 we pushed through, mm. we, we, we got some medications, we got some prescriptions to buy medication for a year so that she can be attended to. Mm. Some, some medications were provided by at the hospital. Mm. But uh, one thing that uh, was, was always a problem was the temperature. It was high. The temperatures were always uh, skyrocket. Mm. And one, one very uh, difficult uh, moment was when she would be, they would be bathing her. Mm. They would remove the bandages, they would put salt and you could see her screaming, you know, to, to the last limit. Mm. But as a father, you, 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 can, you could only watch. Mm. There's nothing that you could do, yeah. And uh, one day, I really remember, it was around 12. She phones me at the hospital. She, she tells me, uh, Kimberly is having a difficult, she's having difficulties in breathing. breathing. Uh, I quickly dashed to the hospital mm. and uh, I found they have act they'd actually removed her from the, mm. from the ward mm. and to a certain corridor where uh, oxygen was accessible. Mm. 
Yes, and uh, she was already in oxygen, and we prayed about it. We, uh, the situation normalized. They put her, put her back on the, on the ward. Um, as days passed on, uh, she started now scratching uh, your body. Yeah. And you could see some, some parts of the, of, the, of the wounds were healing. Mm. Right, physically you could see them, they were starting to heal. Mm. And each time she would scratch, mm. we were thinking it's, it's part of the healing process where she's actually feeling the itches and, and, yeah. and, and the nurses would, would encourage not to, not for her not to do that, but look, she was just a child. Mm. She, could not, she could not handle probably the, the, those itches, mm. yeah. And then, um, I'm sure a day or two days before, mm. yep, yeah, passing on, another call again mm. uh, uh, during the night, Kimberly again, she's, she's having difficulties and, and, and breathing. Mm. And I would dash there mm. in the hospital. And uh, when, we, when we went there, we, we actually had to seek, uh, I'm sure one of the best, uh, they call him the best p pediatrician mm. um, uh, to come and attend to, to, to the child. Mm. She did what, he did what he, he could. And uh, the, 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 the only thing that they, they mentioned was she needed more blood mm. to, be, to be added. And um, soon after, we, we authorized that, we okayed it and said, no, it's okay, okay. let's let be, be given the blood. Mm. But there were some uh, challenges probably in, in, in doing so, where they could find they could they could hardly get the the vein. veins, mm. yeah, because and of the bends maybe. yeah. And sometimes they at one at one moment they would, they 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 to, to get the vein from the from her head, oh. and when they did so, within no time she actually the the head actually swollen, oh. and they had to change try to use the legs so that they can try and and and, and it was a, really a hassle. Mm -hmm. And that uh, process took uh, a bit of time. Mm. Or oh, we are looking at a situation where you, you are told uh, they, they call him the anesthetics, mm. some, something like that, that's the name. But um, what, I re what I remember very well is uh, when all that uh, was, was done, they, they finally managed to, to, mm. to put the, the blood, to add the blood. Mm. But uh, since since then, she 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 started. The body just started swelling, getting swollen, okay. swollen. Then um, a day before, we we were told to to go and have some tests: the liver and uh, uh, the heart, uh, the kidneys, uh, which we did. Fortunately or unfortunately, when, on the day when I was supposed to actually get the results, mm -hmm. there was no power wow. in, in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, at the place at the, where, where, they, where they'd done those, uh, those, those samples anyway. Mm -hmm. But I had to wait and um, they had actually moved here from, from that, that ordinary ward to the intensive care ward. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, she calls me. And she is telling me um, they have actually removed me from from the from the ward. Remember, she would she would sleep with her in that intensive care mm -hmm. intensive care unit. So thereafter, when uh, I just cooled her down and said, "No, it's all right. It, it will be all right. She Kimberly will be fine." Mm -hmm. And then the, the electricity resumed, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I managed to get the results. And after having received the results, I, I dashed back to the hospital, mm -hmm. only to f uh, fortunate or unfortunate when I, the moment I just stepped on the, on the intensive care unit, mm -hmm. uh, they quickly closed the door on me. Mm -hmm. And then I sensed something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I told them, no, 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 I have brought the results. Mm -hmm. And the other medication that you'd uh, actually prescribed that I must buy, mm. yes. 
and then they 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 simply closed me out. Mm. What what they could only do is to get the documents and the medication, mm. and um, they. Uh, spent about 30 minutes in there. Mm -hmm. You could see in rush of doctors changing in and just going in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing that I could do was to pray mm -hmm. that moment because I could see the, the intensity of doctors going in and out. Mm -hmm. It just showed me they, uh, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but believe me, uh, I, I still believed that uh, the Lord is, is in control. Mm. And then 45 minutes, I'm sure after, we, we are invited mm -hmm. to, we are summoned by an, uh, an old lady. And that's when she actually uh, broke the news uh, to us to say, uh, what did you expect? That was the question. What did you expect? Mm. Uh, since you have seen, she, she, she was there for how many, 17, is it 17 or 11, 11 days? 10 days. 10, Ten days. days. <coughs> what did you expect mm. from your child after having noticed what she was going through? Mm. And uh, I told them I expect life mm. uh, on my children. I expect her to recover from the bands. Mm. But then that's when they broke the message and say, no, unfortunately, uh, Kimberly could not make it, mm. yes. And uh, it was uh, a very uh, difficult moment. Mm. Yeah, I could not stop my tears. Mm. Yeah, mm. basically that's, that's, that's what, what happened, mm. yes. That, that was very hard after camp meeting and praying and those 10 days of waiting. Yeah. It must have been a very difficult time. And so after the break, we are going to look at how they managed to process this thing. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still watching the show, Painful Goodbyes, and we heard the terrible loss that happened at camp meeting. And now I'm wondering how you were prepared uh, for this loss. Uh, as we all know, no one can prepare for death. It's just a calm. It was, after all, it was an accident. We couldn't expect that because the child was okay. We prepared for the camp meeting and I was so happy and excited that mm. she will at least attend camp meeting. Mm. And during the course of the week, I was going with her to the children's arena and she was enjoying the puppets and stuff mm. like any other kid. Uh, nothing came into our mind. We didn't even dream of we falling sick or even losing her. Mm. It, we were really shocked. Hmm. And sometimes you think, well, maybe if I didn't go, maybe I could still have my child by now. Maybe, why did God take her young as she was? Hmm. And you know, there are other people that will be seeing it came meeting, you know, struggling even to walk. Hmm. But there she is, an energetic someone. You know, you start asking yourself, quite a number of questions and mm. you don't have an answer mm. for the questions. This brings me to the question about your concept about God. This happened at camp meeting and now how do you think about God? You know, this is a very difficult question to ask, but at that time, how did you think, how did you feel about God? I don't know who is taking the question. Yeah, um, <clears throat> the only thing that, I, that came into my mind was uh, uh, you know, we've got uh, some support structures, mm -hmm. even from the Bible itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you look at job situation, mm -hmm. it, it's, it actually strengthened uh, me to say the, the Lord gave mm -hmm. and he's taken. And uh, now, um, even around the church, mm -hmm. you would find uh, people uh, giving you the support. Mm -hmm. uh, we had pastors. Mm -hmm that would actually spend their time to come and counsel us. 
because really it was not it was not easy. Um, but uh, the truth of the of of the matter is, uh, we we got enough support from the church itself, mm -hmm. and above all, the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me of this verse that I'll always remember: Second uh, Corinthians four, verse eight, mm -hmm. uh, which talks about we are perplexed mm -hmm. uh, on both sides, but the Lord will always be with us. We we are destroyed, but. Uh, the Lord is still with us, mm. you know. So that actually uh, gave me strength mm. to to actually uh, move on and realize that it's, it, there is nothing that we could have done. Mm. Yes, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are moments when you are reminded about the loss. So how do you deal with those losses? <sighs> it's not easy, you know, because the moment you are reminded, it seems like the wound is still fresh. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like there's this song that we sing, uh, the group that we sing with, mm -hmm. which is called The Storms of Life. Mm -hmm. You know, every time when I lose, when we lost our child, it is the time that I think we're starting to, the, the song was introduced. Oh. And the words, you know, okay. they rhyme. You think about the, your loss, then you, you go back to the song. There was a time when we were staging at another church in Ntumbani there. I couldn't stand. Mm. You know, after the first stanza, I walked out mm. from the stage because I couldn't stand it. Mm. Mm. It was like the song was saying for me, mm. not for anyone else. Anyone else. Mm. So it becomes... So even the song becomes a loss reminder. Yes. And God must be having a way of carrying you through those difficult times. So maybe there could be someone that's going through this kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, maybe failing. You quoted a verse, but maybe that person is not able to do that kind of a thing to say we are perplexed and every side. Mm. Um, what words of comfort <coughs> would you give those people? Okay. What I can say is healing is a process. Mm -hmm. It takes time for one to heal and you should allow it. You shouldn't rush and try to be strong in front of people. You should at least have time to mourn. Mm -hmm. That will help you. You know, when you lost a child, especially when you are a woman, it's like something has been taken out from your stomach. You, you feel empty, as if your body is moving, but there is nothing in your stomach. Mm. But what I can say is, I was helped by a certain church member who gave me a book, Surviving the Loss of a Loved One. Mm. I could read the book over and over again. Even now, I can still refer to the book mm. for other things. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. This has been the show. Thank you for sharing your story. And it is encouraging that you can talk about such a painful loss. For me, the Miyakas and the crew behind the scenes, it's a wrap. <laughs>